sights and sounds of Friday football fever. KCRI 3 High School Playbook starts now. You heard him right. Welcome to Case Area 3's High School Playbook Show. I'm Del Rogers, and yes, this is springtime, not fall time, but we still have high school football as some teams decided to play a five-game schedule before April 17th. And one of the newest schools in the Sac Joaquin section, the West Park Panthers from Roseville, played their first ever football game as they played host to Forest Hill, the wildfire tonight. And the Panthers, they pounced tonight. Devell Barksdale scrambles and then finds Julian Nalula. Their second touchdown of the game and a 14 to nothing West Park lead. Forest Hill struggled all night long, but was able to cross the goal line. Nick Meltz to Ahmad Aldrich, as this was the only touchdown scored by the Wildfire. Back to the West Pack Panthers. They were a scoring machine in this one. Their defense even got in on the scoring party. Robert Tupo gets the pick six. West Park wins their first ever football game, 28 to six. And in El Dorado, the Union Mine Diamondbacks hosting the well-traveled Truckee Wolverines who made the 100-mile bus ride for this game tonight. Union Mine turned in a couple of great defensive plays. Number 24 in the end zone picks off a Truckee pass right there. Great grab. But Truckee still had power on offense. Jackson Kale gives to Cody Flynn. Flynn flies to the open and then heads 65 yards into the land of quick six for a Truckee Wolverines touchdown. Truckee also scored by air. Jackson Kale goes deep to Jameson Hogarth for a 42-yard scoring play, and Truckee comes to El Dorado and beats Union Mine. Final score tonight, 24 to nothing. Now, two football or two Foothill Valley League foes went head-to-head -to, -head to open the spring. KCRA 3 Michelle Dapper has more from Oakmont High School with Vikings. Welcome Ponderosa to town. First game back in 16 months, Oakmont masked up and ready for Ponderosa, plus a welcome back to the ladies as well. The visiting Bruins strike first. Ryan Hart, deep ball, 61 yards, and Trace Norquist comes down with it. A 7-0 Pondo lead. Oakmont trying to take the lead before the half, but there's a goal line fumble for the touchback. 7-3 Bruins heading into the break. The Vikings take charge in the third. Hayden Abruzzesi finding Nate Veneri, 7-yard score, 12-7 Oakmont after the failed two-point conversion. And the Vikings defense gets the second half shutout, 15 to seven the final, and oh, what a feeling to be back under the Friday night lights. First half, I went out and just played with, played my all. I went out there, I'm, I'm pretty sore right now, but yeah, I gave it my all. I laid it out on the field. I love this game, and I, I'm, just, I'm just happy to be out here. I miss it every day. My, I, was, I was up all night, I was ready, ready to play, and we won. I'm just happy about it. Well, we had a lot of fire tonight, and uh, We've all been working, like all of us have been working this whole time, staying ready for that chance to play, and like we're just so happy we get to play. We're just happy that at least we got a game in today. So we just we just hope for the next week, and we're going to go and go out and win. So it's on to week two. If everyone can stay healthy, Oakmont gets a shot at Lincoln, while Ponderosa takes on Rio Linda. In Roseville, Michelle Dapper, KCRA 3 News. Good stuff, Michelle. For our first set of scores, let's bring in our high school playbook band of the week, the 65-member Lincoln High School Fighting Zebras marching band. They are under the direction of band director David Hill. Hit it! <laughs> All right, to keep our promise of bringing you every aspect of Friday Night Football, it's time to introduce you to our cheerleaders of the week. It's the 23-member varsity cheerleaders from Lincoln High School in Lincoln. The Fighting Zebras varsity cheer team plan to cheer this spring with face masks on during every game, I'm told, as they say they still love to make their fans in the stands stand up and cheer during every game. That does it for the first half of the Playbook Show. Coming up next, we got our Catch of the Week plus our Game of the Week. But for now, it's time to meet our High School Playbook Game Officials of the Week. The four-person varsity crew, the crew chief in the white cap, he's coming up here, John Flores. What's up, John? He's been a game official for 40 years and plans to retire after this upcoming fall season. And when he's not refereeing high school games, John is a hearing, he's a hearing officer for the state of California.
Time now to introduce our fan of the week. And I can't go into fans because of social distancing, but I saw somebody up there that was loving the game. Kathy, you are our fan of the week. You get a, 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 a football, you get a KCRA3 mug, you get a selfie stick. I got, a, I got a banana for you too. Nice, nice. I am so, so happy to be back here on the field. I'll be working on the field with the zebras. I am so happy that we are back. Go zebras! I love that segment. I wish I was in the stands with the fans because it's so exciting, so much energy in those stands during a Friday night football game. And we usually give out those blue shirts, but we didn't have those because it's springtime now, not the fall. Welcome back to the second half of the Playbook Show. I'm Jill Del Rogers. Now, we had another game of the week scheduled to cover. Michelle Dapper was supposed to go to that game. It was Del Oro at the Granite Bay Grizzlies. But today we were, we were told that one of the teams had a couple of guys test positive. Positive, so they canceled that game. That's why Michelle was at the Oakmont game and not the Del Oro at the Granite Bay game. Had to explain that for you. Now, for the other co-game of the week, your vote sent me to Lincoln for our featured game of the week between the Placer Hillman and the Lincoln Fighting Zebras. Everything seemed normal on this spring night under the lights for this high school football game as Placer and Lincoln flipped the coin. And yes, fans were in the stands for kickoff tonight. Glasser, the Hillman, picked up right where they left off in 2019, using big plays just like this one to march down the field. And they would cap their opening drive with this Xavier Guerrero sprint around the corner and into the end zone for a Placer touchdown. When Lincoln got the football, they went to work using their running game to set the tone. JT Willis with the first down for the Zebras. Then, Ethan Rappa, he took the rock for Lincoln. And Rappa rips around the corner, busting 20 yards into the land of quick six for a Lincoln touchdown. And the Lincoln Zebras led 33-27 at the half. In the second half, Placer never threw in the towel. Martin Hoswell goes up top to Alejandro Prieto. That's a 39-yard toss and catch for a touchdown for the Hillmen. But this time and this game belong to the Lincoln Fighting Zebras. Kyle Remingio finds the zone from eight yards out as the Zebras score another touchdown. And the final score, that game just got over. Now, Placer had always dominated that game in the last three years they had won. But Lincoln would go on to win 54 to 41. The Lincoln Fighting Zebras, they upset Placer. Now, our high school playbook cameras were also in gold tonight. As Liberty Ranch, they played host to the Argonaut Mustangs. They traveled from Jackson. And Liberty Ranch cheer squad was in mid-season form tonight. Remember, it's springtime, but Argonaut scored early and often. Mustangs quarterback Bo Davis hands off to Mateo Flores for the touchdown and the first score of the year for Argonaut. Liberty Ranch had some trouble keeping up with the Mustangs, but here is a nice run by Tony Rango who takes it around the left side into the end zone for a Liberty Ranch touchdown. But the Argonaut Mustangs, they were too tough to handle tonight. Bo Davis finds Colby Urquhart in the end zone. And the Argonaut Mustangs come down the hill to beat Galt. Final score, 46 to seven. Just, just an incredible performance. And you know, it's all my guys. These guys have been out there practicing for eight months and that we didn't know if we were gonna get a shot. And then all of a sudden we get a shot and I said all the hard work you put in for all that time, it, it paid off obviously. Oh, it's just great. This, I, I, I'm just so happy for these guys. It's all on them. They, they had a one heck of a night. Also during our high school playbook show every Friday night, we will feature two games shot from live copter three. Now game one, which was actually a scrimmage tonight. They saw the Woodland Wolves make the short trip to Winters to face the Winters Warriors. Now both head coaches were on the field coaching up their kids. Remember, this is the first time they had a chance to see them since 2019 because there was no season in 2020. The head coach for Winters though, Daniel Ward, he told me that he decided to opt in for the short spring season because his his kids had been working and looking forward to just simply playing high school football. Next week, Winters, they play Dixon and the Woodland Wolves. They will face the Pioneer Patriots from Woodland. And for our second live copter three game of the night shot from the bird's eye view, the Blue Devils from Davis played host to the Will see Wood Wildcats. Wood is from Vacaville. Tonight's matchup was a scrimmage as well, but it looked more like a game as both teams played like something was riding on the outcome of this contest. Next Friday, Davis, they'll host Vacaville, and Wood, we'll see Wood, 
they will host Vanden. Now, as we do every week during the High School Playbook Show, it's time to show off our High School Playbook Catch of the Week. And for week one of the spring football season, our High School Playbook Catch of the Week was turned in by James Mittmeyer of the Oakmont Vikings. James is on the receiving end of this 52-yard toss from Hayden Z. Just a great catch right there by that young man. All right, for our final set of scores, let's bring back our High School Playbook Band of the Week, the 65 member Lincoln High School Fighting Zebras Marching Band. They are under the direction of band director David Hill. Hit it! Gotta love the horn section. The poll for next week's high school playbook game of the week is already up and running. Now here are your choices for games played Friday, March 19th. You got the Woodland Wolves taking on the Pioneer Patriots. That is a crosstown rival in the town of Woodland. Roseville at Wood Creek, another crosstown rival. Galt, the Warriors playing the Bradshaw Christian Pride. That's Bradshaw Christian's only home game during this five week period. And El Dorado versus Rosemont. Now the polls, they close Wednesday night at seven o'clock. Then I'll announce the winner at 10 and 11 o'clock that evening. Evening. The vote, log on to caseray.com, then go to the high school playbook section and watch a 10 second video for you to get the code word. You got to have the code word, or you can scan this QR code with your smartphone to vote now, vote often, and yes, you're allowed to vote for a friend. That's it for the uh, high school playbook show for Michelle Dapper and the rest of our crew. I'm Dell Rogers. We'll see you back here next Friday night.